I think sometimes kids are told to fear the sea and I do think, you know, that's a responsible method in some respects, but we're not really taught how to appreciate the sea either and I think they should really go hand in hand. I think the answer is never restricting access to the outdoors, whether that's, you know, nature reserves or coastal environments, it's never about restricting access. It's, if anything, we want people to come here, we want people to appreciate the environment, the coastal environment, the marine environment, because then people will care, and if people care, that's how we protect it. My name is Caitlin Cunningham and I work for Nature Scott as a Blue Carbon graduate placement. Blue Carbon is the carbon captured and stored within marine and coastal habitats. Climate change has been a topic that has been in the media for all of my life and I think the ocean's role within climate change has slightly come more to the forefront, especially in recent years and blue carbon sits nicely within that because our oceans do absorb a majority of the carbon that we emit in our atmosphere and they do help regulate our current atmosphere and everything that we rely on. So I think our oceans are undervalued currently. I think they're underappreciated compared to terrestrial systems and that's probably because we don't necessarily experience the ocean as directly. So I think it's all about accessibility and I think that's for both the general public but then policy makers as well. The specific project that I'm working on at the moment with Nature Scott is basically to collate and assess any research pertaining to blue carbon, especially anything that's relevant to Scotland. The aim of this is to identify evidence gaps and this will hopefully help prioritise and inform future research needs. I'm also trying to tease out any information we can use and this will help inform management decisions. My work links into policy because it looks at the various pressures that are on these habitats and how this might interact with overall habitat health and ecosystem health. And this is very useful when we're then implementing policy to protect these going forward. There's definitely an element of nature knows best and allowing nature to thrive on its own and I think that's why when you think about protecting and adapting these habitats to the various pressures it is primarily about removing these pressures it's about removing the pressures that we've placed on these habitats so that it can get back to what it does best and a healthy functioning habitat is also going to be able to store carbon it's going to have high biodiversity when you think of nature-based solutions terrestrially this is very different to the marine and coastal environment so restoration is an option, but this is not necessarily the first thing we think of. For the marine and coastal environment, it's more about protection and adaptation to things like climate change and other anthropogenic pressures. That isn't to say that there aren't restoration projects currently happening, but having a protection standpoint and focus on this and safeguarding these stores is probably the better way to go. And it's the first in the toolkit, if you would use that phrase. Allowing nature to thrive and to work on its own is beneficial for us. So if you're looking at seagrass habitats, if you work to protect these, whether that's by removing pressures or even restoring some seagrass beds, if you allow this habitat to thrive, that means it's going to provide a wealth of benefits to us. It's going to store the carbon, which will help mitigate against climate change. It's going to be a nursery habitat for fish species, and it's also going to have other benefits, whether that's from a biodiversity standpoint, or whether that's from a slightly coastal flood protection standpoint as well. There's all these benefits that we will gain from protecting these habitats. With coastal protection and with flooding in particular, there are issues with man-made structures. So these hard defences, whether that's a seawall, something that's very physical and very unmoving, that there are some issues there where you can move the problem of erosion, for instance, further down the coast. But if you instead try to reinstate or restore these other coastal habitats, these natural solutions, they're quite dynamic. So if you're trying to look at sand dunes, for instance, and restore natural ecosystem functioning there, the sand dunes are dynamic enough to respond to the changes and to move with them. And I think that's very important, that a benefit that a natural ecosystem can bring that these hard man-made structures just can't. So a specific example of a nature-based solution could be the West Sands Dune Restoration Project and this is just in St Andrews. The dune system there was restored and this means it's been restored to natural dune system functioning so it provides defence against coastal flooding or erosion. The vegetation on the dunes also helps store some carbon and there's also some recreational benefits because people can now enjoy this marine environment.
In terms of the specific gaps that my work has highlighted, it very much depends on the habitat. Also, if you're looking on a national perspective, we need to better understand the extents of these habitats. We know Scotland has seagrass, we know Scotland has salt marshes, and it's about mapping these areas to the best of our abilities so we can understand where we can protect these habitats. We can't protect them unless we know they exist. Working in my field and doing what I do, it definitely gives me hope because I think when you work in climate change or marine climate change, you can feel quite down about the current situation. But I think through working in my role and seeing the current research, seeing the policy that's coming forward or seeing how people are talking more about blue carbon, just as simple as that, even if there's no policy being implemented just yet, it's about getting the ball rolling. That inspires hope in me because I, I can see that perhaps, maybe not right this minute, but sometime very soon, we're going to have some great protection of these habitats and we're going to be moving forward.